I knew I had to talk to my boss the next day, and I was like, I can't imagine looking this guy in the face with this shitty ass mustache and him being like, oh, God, I hate this guy. <laughs> I want. I have like a new boss now too, and it's like one of his first interactions is going to be me with like a Cheeto mustache, just looking him in the face, being like, I'm not good at this job, and I'm scared of you. It's a brand new. It's a brand new job. Same job, it's just different, di- different bag of bones. Yeah. They just moved teams, and now I got to try to show off and not have a mustache. Oh well. Let's uh, start the show, and me and Matt are going to take a shot. Because we're real men, dude. We do things. John, anything? I'll, I'll pour some water in mine. Uh, I spilled so much. God, I haven't had Jim Bean in forever. Holy Tell shit. Man, that was worse than I remember. I don't miss warm alcohol. Uh, I, I, it was in the freezer for like an hour, so I expect oh, okay. it better. I want to just give warm alcohol on purpose. Yeah. Unofficial song, who knows what it is. Is this just outtakes of Mara screaming at you? It does sound like her, right? It's just, it's always bitching. Welcome, lovers and friends. It's me, your boy, Miss Everybody. And I'm joined today, my co host. Wait, she's not fucking here. And we are in a new studio, so congratulations, us. Congratulations, I in our studios. And I am joined by comedians and hosts of That Rules Podcast. John Mayantag and Matt Peoples. How you guys doing? What up, dude? How the What's hell are you? Thanks for having us, Thank man. you for having us. And the brand new studio, it looks beautiful, much better than anything we've ever had, even remotely close. Do you feel, I, I was telling John that it, I kind of feel like a news anchor in here. How so? Because it's just an enclosed room with lights and cameras. It <laughs> yeah. seems like something that would be like a news anchor would be in. Or perhaps pornography. Um, those two? There's going to be pornography. <laughs> really? uh, you signed that, I told you, I, we. I, you guys did sign that form. John has my back holes. You have all my front holes. <laughs> Only while phone? the cameras are on. <laughs> Damn, I got to go in your pee-pee hole? <laughs> well, I mean, there's other holes. In, I got a mouth. Now nah, I'm going pee-pee hole, dude. Yeah, we're you, connecting. Always, <laughs> always sound when in, when in room, you know? We're going full avatar, dude. We're connecting our ponytails in the front. <laughs> NDA stands for, nah, dude, anal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go, dude. It's going to be a great app. <laughs> so uh, what's your guys' podcast about? That Rules Podcast. Me and Mar are on there. Mar's on here right now. But anyway, what's That Rules Podcast about? It's about nothing and everything all at once, I feel like. It's uh it's like you know Seinfeld was the show about nothing. Yeah. It's it's just a podcast about nothing. Mm. We proved that last night. So if you tune into probably our newest episode, it was Matt and I just slowly melting into my porch couch. Yeah. Uh just Shrooms fully, are fully saying, Man, nobody can really do this. Nobody does this like we do it, as we just did not discuss a single thing. <laughs> I think I landed on what I think the tone of it is. It's basically like when you go out and you get hammered and you end up with like a group of strangers and you go back to their house that night and most of the people have gone to bed and it's like you and these two dudes are still up at like four in the morning and you're all like kind of fucked up and high and you're listening to the two dudes and you're like, they're kind of annoying, but why do I like them? But they're making some really good points. That's the podcast, dude. <laughs> yeah. That's all. <laughs> so what's the best point you've ever made on the podcast? We've never uh, made a point. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we've ever stood for anything. We've never made a point. Yeah. We, we Early on, we, we agreed that uh, we are like, we don't care about issues in either direction. Uh-huh. Like we're always on the fence. It's like you give us a topic. It's like we'll find the good, the bad. So it's like we've formed our own uh, political party in the Heather Gray party. Mm. And that like just like a good Heather Gray t-shirt. It's like yeah. nobody's ever offended by somebody in a Heather Gray t-shirt. Yep. <laughs> So we're the Heather Gray party. I feel like a lot of comedians are like that, though. They Politically, they normally don't go to one way. I mean, there are people that are really political, but a lot of comedians, I you have to you find have the funny to in everything. Because like, if you, if you want to entertain everyone, you can't piss off, you know, the whole lot of them. You have to be able to ride the rail of, you know, both sides. Or you could just be so one way that it's hilarious. It's funny because you kind of look like a Democrat. Matt looks like a Republican. <laughs> How do you oh, yeah. figure, dude? I'm wearing Birkenstocks again, you it's, fool. It's your, it's your, again, the Birkenstocks are ridiculous. <laughs> the, it's the hair, I think. You know, the, the quaff over there is the yeah. Democrat. Yeah. And then the red is the Republican. He used so. to have more of a pub hair, but I, I did. I the longer my hair gets, I look like I, I fully Hippie. support, yeah, a lot of left leaning things. <laughs> dude. I don't give a shit about either. I hate both. I hate all of it. So it's like, why do I have to care? Why we do were, I have to pick one? We were promised. Shirts for my overlord, so I'm a bit disappointed <laughs> that we didn't have Big T 2020. Dude, I've been playing up this bit that I love Trump, and it's getting more real. And when you're like, you're wearing a Trump shirt on the podcast, I was like, this may be the crossover point. Dude. We used to end every episode with you saying something just Republican. 
Yeah. And that slowly started fading away, but I, I feel like it's coming back. I feel like the red wave's about to crash over you again. Who is it ever, dude? <laughs> <laughs> Who is it ever, dude? I pushed Joe Biden down at that fucking Air Force thing the other day, and I'm ready. I heard you put a stick in his tire when he was riding that bike. <laughs> yeah, dude. I was bullying him in the you, 1950s. You yeah. big daddied him. <laughs> yeah. I fucking had a greaser jacket on bullying Joe Biden. So how did the two of you guys meet? Uh, match.com. We just, oh, yeah. Shut up, dude. No, we didn't. We're not gay. We're cool as hell. If we were gay, that'd be cool, too. Happy Pride Month. But uh, no, we, yeah. we met at an open mic, as uh, true white men do. We were just, like, doing comedy, like most of the people, and we are, too. We're not the exception. But, like, most of the people doing stand-up are, like, kind of weird people mm. to some effect. And you just kind of look for, like, dudes that kind of look like you, and you gravitate towards them. So John saw me, a young, supple, probably 24-year-old, 23-year-old. He got eyes on me, and he wanted to take me under his wing. Mm. And then the rest is history. Yeah. So let me see, let me teach you a thing or two. Tell me that, I haven't taught him a goddamn thing yet. Yeah. Are <laughs> it's, you? A weird, it's always a weird origin story. Like, there's no... Everyone always tries to, like, romanticize it. Like, nah, we were grinding it out, doing shows. It's like, no, we were just two guys in the back room of a bar talking about our feelings into a mic mm -hmm. to try to make people giggle. Basically, it was... I don't know. And then you guys just, how do you start the podcast from doing that? Ugh. Was Were we a pandemic podcast? Were, were we pre-pandemic? We were post. We were like, right? we were like, uh, were post. yeah, we were in post-modernist pandemic period. We were just looking for a way to like drink where like our significant others wouldn't yell at us. I was going to say, <laughs> yeah. nobody can yell at you. I mean, everybody can yell at you when yeah. you're on a podcast, but yeah. then again, nobody can really yell at you. They were like, what are you guys doing? Why are you away from us? And we're like, I don't know, bitch, art, heard of it? And then we just go to a podcast and drink at like four in the afternoon <laughs> on Friday. We were talking about on the way over here. It started, we started doing it first in my garage and then we started doing it on Matt's couch after that. And most of it doing what? Like that sounds doing like doing what? And then after that, we decided <laughs> podcasting would be fun to do. <laughs> so after we're done, we're done just filling holes, rock and roll. Uh, I'm, I'm lost. What was I talking about? You get lost in the thought of no. Gay so sex. we we were doing it on like <laughs> we're doing it on my wife's laptop, which makes it even worse. Damn, we were recording the, the podcast on my wife's laptop with that, just the camera on the laptop. We didn't even have a camera. We just did audio, and okay. it was like two shitty twenty dollars mics we got off Amazon. Yeah, and. We never did headphones. We bought like the arm and everything. We thought we were official. And then we had Jay, who you met, our producer. Yeah, yeah. He reached out to us and was like, you know, I'd love to start to get into this. Would you guys want to work together? And like immediately it went from like, we were just a laptop podcast to like full production. We were like, all right, right. this is a fucking huge leap, but we haven't had to do anything new because Jay fucking rules and does a all lot the of work. stuff. Yeah. So yeah. shout out to Jay. I never had the begin. I mean, in the beginning, obviously, we were smaller production. It was one camera, then it was two cameras. Now it's it bounces around, but I never had like just the audio. Like Robbie was my co-host for the first two episodes. You got the boot. He kicked you off. No, no, he uh, fucking he oh, said he's on the cover art for the you for the Apple podcast. Is that true? I saw it today because I went on the uh, hey, on your Apple no, podcast. No, uh, the black guy. Robbie's not black. He's just Puerto Rican. I don't see color, dude. Uh, <laughs> might be on that one. You're black to me, dude. Happy Pride Month. If you want to be black, though, you can be black. Yeah, they love that. They love when you do that. They, <laughs> they really love when you call yeah. them they. <laughs> Sorry, fellas. That one's on me. Always make sure you you call everyone they. That's not yeah, you. Yeah, that's my bad. Game five of the NBA Finals tonight. They, they love that. Um, all right. Well, that was bad. So anyway, cool. So how do you guys like research your guests before they come on? Do you do any research or nah? Just kind of uh, deal with we, all. We probably issues. should do more. Most of the guests we've had have been just like our buds from the comedy scene. So it's mm -hmm. like it, it. You know, we know enough about them to you know have them on. But, yeah, we probably should do more research. Uh, yeah, I like the idea of doing research. But, to, like... <laughs> I like the idea of doing stuff. That <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I just get so tired. I gotta go to bed, dude. I love the concept of love. But, you know, who knows? <laughs> yeah, just can't, can't break through. The, uh, like, our podcast is a lot of, like, predominantly, like, improv. Right. So I feel like not, e like not even saying this to make an excuse for not doing a lot of research. I do think it's good to know, like, the bare minimum and then bring somebody on. And then you just fuck around. Like, it's kind of easier... I think maybe in some instances to do the improv without predisposed ideas of what the person does or what they think about kind of thing. But then we've had several podcasts where there's just like a minute lull with somebody we've had on and we're like, fuck, we should have looked up who the fuck this guy was beforehand, dude. <laughs> I have no idea who you are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so have you ever lost an episode? So you were talking about the early stages where you were just recording audio. Yeah, we had to have. I, we've lucked out that it was, it wasn't so much that we would lose episodes. We would be like 45 minutes in like and cooking on like just the two of us because for our first like 
40 some episodes it was mostly just the two of us even when we had a guest we would share a mic because we were too cheap to buy a third one right, right and the guest would get the other one but like we would just be cooking and then we'd look down and the laptop would say like disc is spinning too slow and we would have no clue how much we missed. was recorded so we would just go back and be like all right so what, we're drunk what was that great <laughs> riff drunker. we just had yeah we're hammered we're still, <laughs> we're still trying to figure out the laptop we have no clue how to work anything so we have a few episodes that just randomly cut to new stuff. Mm. So they're not fully lost. I don't think we ever lo- fully lost one. I don't think so. Definitely some a lot of uh, edit outs in the beginning. Have you ever not released an episode on purpose? Like you thought the episode was bad, so you just didn't release it? No. And unfortunately, we have no integrity in that department. <laughs> We're like, if it sucks, we recorded yeah. it. We don't know how to get rid of it. It's going out on the internet. Yeah. No, yeah. We've, we've, we've put everything out there. Hopefully one day it'd be nice to hit one where we're just like it would it would feel like such a waste though yeah because now it's any more like being an adult I'm like I gotta set aside time I gotta make sure I can go do this thing and like right. to just go and drive to somewhere and do it and then we lose it we're just like fuck yeah full waste of a night mm-hmm. yeah I mean you still had fun though so it's like. Yeah, <laughs> and I guess as long as you, as long as you had fun, yeah. podcasting is really the friends you made along the way. It's not the episode. <laughs> how long have you guys been comedians then? Because you started post pandemic with the podcast so how long you guys been telling jokes for to get paid for it i think i'm six years uh, as a comic i was out in harrisburg is where i started and then moved to south jersey philly scene Mm -hmm. when i moved back so i think i'm at six years it's always tough with the pandemic because you're like do i count those years like Mm -hmm. i did like zoom comedy for a show during the pandemic so it's like I, i hated what stand-up comedy was for that. Do I even count that, you know, that time? We'll say six years. Long story short. Wait, did you start doing Zoom? No, you didn't start because that was six years ago. Yeah, no, no. It was, I did one Zoom <laughs> That'd comedy be sick show. if you did yeah. Zoom before. It was even a <laughs> It was just me and a bunch of random people, yeah. You're I'm just muted. patching into people's work conference calls. <laughs> what about you, peoples? Yeah. Well, dude, what the hell was that? You said that with indignation. Well, look, what, look at your shoes that you're wearing. I feel <laughs> disrespected again. What are you looking under the table down on my penis? And you just bones? look like you've shouted you people at a lot of people. <laughs> Guys, I can't change the way I look. Okay. They love it. They love it. They love when I do that. All of they do. Dude, if I could have voted for Barack Obama a third time, I wouldn't have. <laughs> it's not the racist about that. He's just a good guy. <laughs> dude, I got to stop playing in this completely <laughs> racist, <laughs> shitty character that I do on every podcast. Uh, I started four and a half years ago. What a class. Colossal mistake. Uh, <laughs> Life went been... downhill. I was married with two kids. Now I'm not married. No kids anymore. Don't yeah. know what happened to them. I used to have abs. Now I have a drinking problem. <laughs> Comedy rules, baby. Everybody started up. You know, it's a good time. But yeah, been four and a half years, and then we started. Uh, I guess yeah. So the three year two been doing it for. We actually just found out this is like our two year anniversary of mm. doing the podcast. Like I think around today, within right. this week. So. That means nothing, but now you know. Well, congratulations. Yeah, what did you get me for our anniversary? <laughs> huh? I got, I've got i gotten you stuff as gifts in the podcast. I don't think you ever got me anything. Yes, I have. What? Other than friendship? I bought him a Phillies uh, oh, old yeah, poster. Oh, yeah, you did. You Dude, drove. he broke out like a fucking shark tooth, tooth necklace on the podcast for me one time. Okay. That Some, sounds very, that sounds cute, actually. I right? would love no, I'm saying it in gift, a good way. Right? I'm not saying it's yeah. a bad thing. I'm saying Sometimes like, you hurt your shoulder and you take muscle relaxers and you go to the aquarium with your wife and your beautiful daughter. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you're realizing as you're walking through the gift shop that the muscle relaxers have fully kicked in. You're fully and, aroused. Yeah, you think it would be <laughs> silly for you and your 10 years younger than you friend to have matching shark tooth puka shell necklaces yep. that neither of us has ever worn. Not once. I, lo- <laughs> I, I unfortunately lost it. Oh, really? Yeah, I lost it in the settlement. Yeah, yeah. My bitch the, wife the, took the, it. The divorce again. <laughs> yeah, my double XL wife took it away from me, dude. That big bone She bitch. took the pooks? She took the pooks. She took the kid. She took my roommate. So I want to play a game called Which One, where I'm going to ask a question and be a choice between the two of you. You guys are going to say either John or Matt. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So which one is funnier in like a normal conversation? Uh, I'd say Matt is. You're a a big uh, center of the, like center of attention in the circle guy. And I mean that in a good way. John's more comfortable just relaxing. And I, at all times, I'm like, God, I need this person to like me. <laughs> yeah. So that might be the root of it. You do. Yeah. You have a constant pursuit of, I need approval from everybody. It's a therapist. It's are. a whole therapist thing. It's not a big deal. It's yeah. Whatever, it's whatever. <laughs> so <laughs> my therapist was my wife. Yeah. I'd say you definitely. <laughs> she took my money, my feelings. <laughs> Which just, one is better at podcasting? Uh, we're, I think we're about exactly. I think the it's same. a dead even tie. Yeah. <laughs> I think we're exactly. I both, I think we both have strengths and faults that 
neither complement each other at all. Yeah, but, but no works. weaknesses. <laughs> Zero weaknesses. I said faults. No, I like how you worded that, though. What do you mean? Faults makes it sound like... It's like, look, I acknowledge this. It's like weakness. It's like, I'm not weak. Yeah, True. I would never. I'm yeah, man. I would never. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, I have my faults, but I've never been weak. I Fault had a mustache ourselves. for a month or two, but then I shaved it. <laughs> Dude. <didn't> <laughs> yeah. If you want to see the back. mustache, go to That Rules Podcast and check out uh, Loving Them One episode. Great episode. <laughs> uh, who does more work for the pod? John. You have lately, though. Uh, I will he, say. Uh, he does like the more. He'll do like the art. He'll just sit and do. Uh, he'll, my favorite part is thinking about John like. Uh, <laughs> with his turtle, with his uh, on shark tooth necklace on, on substances, with yeah. his shark tooth necklace, just <laughs> rubbing his inner thigh on his laptop, just cutting out pictures of my face to put on pictures of like USA skaters. Oh mm. yeah, it's so fun. Yeah, dude, it's so fun because I only send you the final draft. That'll show you the other thirty <laughs> different things I put our faces on. That was just weird for a while. Yeah, do you look like every, every like because I'll do the artwork usually on like a Monday or a Tuesday when I'm lazy and you know whenever I get to it. Yeah. So, like, Wednesday is usually when I go in and will, like, you know, just delete recent pictures in my phone. Mm -hmm. And just scrolling through the random shit that I'm like, what? like, on our episode, it was, like, an old Taco Bell. And then I had a bunch of screenshots of you and Mara on my phone. Yeah. So, I'm like, I look like a fucking serial killer if anyone looks at this. <laughs> yeah. Right. And then just everyone's head cut off. Yeah. It was weird. If any of us <laughs> disappeared, like, I don't know where Mara is right now. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah I knows? guess we'll never know, guys. <laughs> I wouldn't look into it. Don't worry about it. Dude. <laughs> I think you look cute on, like, Bucky Lassick. You know what I mean? Like, you'd be a good Bucky Lassick. Yeah, dude. You're saying I shred the gnar? Are you trying to insinuate that <laughs> you're, I shred you're the gnar? shredder? Yo, you, we both look like skaters. That uh, I probably look like a more approachable skater than you do. Uh, what are you trying to? Say? I don't. You look, look, look like death metal skater. Oh, uh, I look like uh, I'm gonna like bang heads or something. Yeah, like you're gonna like fucking. Just you're that guy. Where, get hurt. Who's that video? The the skater that beat the shit out of like seven dudes at once. Oh, fucking um. He had a shaved OJ head. Simpson. Yeah, no. that guy. Mike Vallely. Mike Vallely. Mike yeah. Vallely, that's it. Bam's, or not Bam's coming on the show. Fucking, um. <laughs> I was say, you found him? <laughs> no, Novak's coming on the show again. I w I've always yeah. wanted to ask him about that because they were all kind of close growing up. So I love that video. That, that was a legend. That was like pre-YouTube. I remember getting, like seeing that just like at friend, like friends who were skate kids, like on a mixtape. You look like everyone in that video that he beat up though. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you yeah. look it's like really a video of you kicking our ass. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm wearing LL Bean right now. I look so punchable. <laughs> I had the most punchable face ever. <laughs> so who is more likely to get the girl? You guys are both single in this scenario. You guys are going out to bar club, whatever it is. Uh, no, it's you. It's you. You have to say that. I've seen legally. no. I've seen ladies throw themselves at you in our in our time as friends. Uh, again, I think it's, it comes back to if that is the case, which I do not believe it to be so. Because I think again, if we come back, we got our little niches. Again, we love our beautiful. Beautiful wives. Matt loves his niches. Wait, you're married his too? Nephews. I'm not married, no. but I have a sweet, gentle angel at home. So theoretically, if I'm cheating and beating, I... <laughs> <laughs> if it were to happen, yeah. I... Uh... No, again, it goes back to just like, I'm with the girl and I'm like, please, for fuck's sake, like me. And John's like, whatever. If you do, you do. It's not really a big deal to me. And they they like, they like might like either one. So mm. yeah, I, it's, I'd it's say... dependent daddy. on the girl. You're right. Do you find that as a redhead, as a... Red-headed guy, obviously. I mean, I, don't, I haven't checked down under, but um, you're trying, you're trying to say I don't have a big LL Bean down there, dude. I, I don't know what you have down there. I, yeah. I mean, I would, I, we'll, sm we'll smell it later, but um, <laughs> <laughs> is that another one of the segments? Uh, <laughs> smell it later. What's oh, that smell God, like <laughs> with mad people's teens? Um, <laughs> do you find that there are girls that are like you're my first redhead? Uh, they don't like talk about it. <laughs> like, I don't think they want to bring it up. Like, I've asked my girlfriend now. I was like, have you ever dated? Like, do you feel weird that you date a redhead? And she'll say it where she's like, I don't really think about it, but deep down I know she's like, ugh. Damn, you, you do maintain a good square in fuckboy bingo. Yeah, dude. If it's just like a bunch of girls at a bachelorette party, they're like, yeah. we have to kiss the guy, we have to get a number, and it says here we got to fuck a redhead. So. Yeah. <laughs> Which is crazy. To be a confident redhead is absolutely insane. Like, and to be averagely looking? You think I'm cute, dude. I mean, it's not bad. And you're above six foot, yeah? Uh, people are saying Slightly. six two, six three. <laughs> I haven't looked at it recently. I think it's about six four. Okay, so makes sense. So you're you probably are like the one percent of the one percent of gingers. I I have said that. I I, I I for a normal person, I'm like a decent, a regular looking guy. But for a ginger, I might be one of the most gorgeous people on the planet. Because that is a horrific. If you're a ginger out there, fucking kill yourself, dude. <laughs> yeah, but it's it's like you, and then it's Prince Harry. <laughs> True. Andy Dalton. Yeah, but Prince Harry's fucking. <laughs> Shooting for the stars, dude. Because if you're a decent looking ginger, you go like, all right, I'll get a hot white girl. He was like, fuck stars. it, dude. Going for a hot light skinned black chick, which is a crazy move. That's, you're going 
to yeah. the moon. See, the he, pro- he broke years of royal rule like, yeah. <laughs> to be like, I got to get that sweet brown sugar. <laughs> See, the problem I've always had with redheads, so the other way, I look for redheads in porn for females. Yeah. But every time, if you look for a redhead in porn as a woman, they're always fucking a black guy. And I can't see myself as a black guy, and I want to see myself. I like to think that you have a spreadsheet somewhere where you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 crunch the, one. I crunch the numbers every time I try to jerk I off. Got a black formula, dude. I got everything. It's, uh, <laughs> he's in Excel dragging and filling, and so is the black dude. <laughs> <laughs> so who's most likely to get in a fight at the bar, or anywhere in general? I guess. That's probably me. Uh, yeah, that's probably me. Well, I, I, I drink. don't drink. He doesn't anymore, drink. Anymore. Yeah, so I don't, I don't drink anymore. So I I more or less would like to just step back and trip people at the bar. Uh. But that would get me beat up too. So yeah, I, I still got, run my mouth a lot. True, I feel like so. I, I almost got in a fight the other day. I got called a misogynist at the bar. This is a true story. Some guy you were up. called one. Yeah. Oh, what were you doing, misogyny? Yeah, Matt's like I've never rubbed anyone's shoulders. What are you talking about? <laughs> That's not misogyny. Apparently, they don't like when you call women dumb. I'm kidding. I didn't say, it, but the dude, yeah, I did. Get Wait, called they, him. they, or <laughs> uh, they, them? Yeah. <laughs> they, <laughs> them, there. No, yeah. I, so it's probably yeah. Zem was there too. Yeah. <laughs> Zuri James, LeBron's daughter. They were all there. Uh, but yeah, I think it's probably me. I would say probably me. I feel like they're all just, it's all coming right to you, Matt. Oh, by the way, and lose quick. Yeah. We always talk about it between the two of us. We've never won a fight. Yeah. So yeah, fucking, we got that. Ass. So test us. That was our original merch. It was just going to say handsome idiots. We've never won a fight. <laughs> if I'm, if I have Mike Vellelli running at me at full speed, dude, I'll, you'll never see a guy give head that quick. <laughs> I know you could use tears as lube. Yeah. <laughs> Every yeah. time someone's like, I'd rather die than, than suck a dick. No, you want it. Yeah. There's no way. Cause all you have to do is suck a dick. I mean, yeah, I'm assuming how fast do you think you can get a guy to come? Right. What guy? <laughs> Any, I mean, me or Matt, like, who cause do you I think, think uh, I'm going to put in better effort on a more, you know, well-kept guy. If it's uh, like a disgusting, it's a guy. clean dick. There's clean factors. Dick? Yeah. Oh, clean dick under, under three minutes. Okay, how recently have I got my nails done? Yeah. <laughs> is, is that a factor when you're good head? Of course, dude. <laughs> yeah, because I want to fuck up my Has nails. Has he gotten his spray tan recently or not? I used to ask my buddies this because this is the type of fun guy. <laughs> Would you guys let me suck your dick? <laughs> <laughs> I thought that's what we signed. <laughs> They're so weird about it, too. But I just let him go to bed and I would do my thing. <laughs> But I would, uh, like, I used to ask my friends, I was like, would you rather have herpes or have to give a guy head? And, mm. like, all of them were like, oh, I'll just give a guy head. It's whatever. Like, I don't care. And then I would explain, like, you're not really thinking about the process of giving a dude head. Mm-hmm. Like, you're going to start doing it. You got to, like, get him up. And then he's going to be, like, rubbing your hair and, like, moaning and shit. And, like, he might do some, like, dominant stuff. And I'm like, you're not really thinking about how scarring this will be. So I made a lot of dudes say that they would rather have herpes. I mean, but I feel like everybody has herpes, yeah? I love that you, That's kind you of my point. Into that, I love that you went into that knowing that you were like, this is not just going to be a one question and done kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to convince these boys. Yeah. <laughs> He's well, going to pull like, yeah. a 1950s detective so. Yeah, you're and, like, what's a little bit of ointment every couple months? <laughs> well, in today's society, everybody's abandoned nuance. I'm trying to put the nuance of the situation in front of them and say, this guy's rubbing your hair and he's like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you know, you don't like it. You heard me doing it. No, in your I don't, I don't like don't that. Like see, it, see, it, but if I'm sucking the dick, I'm making the rules. You know what I mean? This is my one and only time <laughs> sucking the dick. Such I'm a selfish <laughs> lover, dude. I always keep a list of rules in my pocket just in case it ever comes up. <laughs> I'm gonna need you to sign this real quick. <laughs> <laughs> that rules. So, <laughs> who's the most likely to leave a bad tip? You guys go out to eat. Oh, I don't know. I'm a great tipper, and I think I you tip. are too. Yeah, I think we're both. I come from the service industry, though. You never worked in restaurants, right? Mm-hmm. So I think just by that standard, I think I maybe will leave a little bit better tip, mm. but not a bad one. I, I think it's one of the things I like about you. you. You're a good tipper. That's a horrific tenant to just have you a close give, friendship you over. You give okay head <laughs> and you're a good tipper. one of my closest tipper. friends. <laughs> it's like, you're a good tipper. <laughs> Look, you're, always I say it all the time. You're a very bad guy. You're you a bad guy. S- <laughs> I don't, I, that's one of my least favorite bits. You're, you're a bad guy, but you're a good person. <laughs> I can live with that. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but I give good head. <laughs> That's what yeah. that means, dude. <laughs> Who's most likely to be late to something? You, me, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm overly early to. I, I say that as I've been late to everything we've done recently. Mm. But I always make it a point to be like ten minutes early. I'd rather sit in the car mm. and scroll through my phone for ten minutes. I'm usually thirty minutes early places. Like I'm so early that when I get there. I wait in the car in shame. I'm like, I'm, I'm here way too early. Oh, I love getting somewhere really early. I love checking out an area. Yeah. I, oh, I love just getting lost in a, in a couple back roads. Yeah. Find like a weird farm. Like, yeah. You know I never would have known that was there. You know what's something weird that I, I enjoy seeing, even though it's, I mean, that's weird to say. 
it's gonna be even weirder when I tell you what it is. When I see like kids skateboarding, because I feel like I, I haven't seen that since we were younger. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it is when you when you stumble upon a skate park, you're like, these are still around, awesome. And the kids aren't wearing shirts and they're just out there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They're so supple. <laughs> <laughs> and then I teach them a real cool trick, and then they come back to my house. <laughs> Jesus, Mister, you're really big. <laughs> Who's most likely to get fired from their job? <laughs> <laughs> Tried and true. I've been fired from so many jobs. Really? I've been laid off. I was laid off recently, so not fired. fired. But that, fired. that means fired. Yeah, that um, means you were the one that they didn't like the most. Yeah, uh, well, there was like eleven of us that they didn't like the most. So uh, I got fired from working at a golf course in high school. There was that. Um, How can you get fired? All you do is what? Carry balls or pick up balls? No, I was on course maintenance. I was working the blue collar side of the <laughs> of the golf course. I was mowing the greens, weed whacking the traps, and uh, they wanted me to be there at seven o'clock every morning. But I was nineteen and on summer breaks. So I was like, "Well, I'm going to drink till four a.m." Yeah, of course. So I'm going to sleep in my car outside of my friend's house. Wake up in a panic and be, you know, three and a half to four minutes late to work every day. Mm -hmm. That's just how it's going to be. And here they were just like writing down all those minutes that I was late. And they finally were like, if you're late one more time, you're fired. And I was like, all right, that, that's cool. And then I just got like violently sick and just didn't call out. And they were like, you're late. I was like, well, no, I'm throwing up. Like, yeah. I can't come in. Like, you're fired. That was it. Were you hungover? No, that was actually like a, like a stomach bug, I think, that caused all that. I was waiting for Robbie, but he already oh. walked out. <laughs> I feel like that light's in your eye, yes or no? Maybe. Robbie, can you like tilt this? No, this way. No, I'm good. Good. Can you, I'm good. I that, that flap, this flap, there you go. Oh, I felt like it was right in your face when I was looking at you. Uh -huh. I felt like your whole face was pink. I just wanted to make sure you weren't too pink. I know you're pink in the middle, but so who's <laughs> most likely to have sex tonight? Not me, dude. I got to go back to my parents' house. I mean, they, I don't know what they're up to, <laughs> but I don't want to anticipate it. You just haven't crossed who's that most bridge yet. To watch them. <laughs> yeah. Who's the watch sex tonight? <laughs> I'm thinking I'll, I can cash in on a chip tonight. You think I had some morning sex, so that oh, was today. Fun. Yeah, oh, you're such a. So we'll see if I can since I've had double sex. down. Yeah, it's it's always fun when you get like a out of nowhere, unexpected morning sex. I always have to like wake up with the dog, and my girl sleeps in a lot. Yeah, so I always have to go. I wake up with the dog and go do stuff with him. So I'm sure morning sex. <laughs> I mean, I need, I need like, to get my, I need I get get my back, sex I'm, somewhere. Yeah, I, mean, I can't get up. Again. <laughs> I can't get up. I'm so flaccid. I'm so yeah. You know. Morning sex is crazy because I have to shit so bad. Like, are you guys allowed to shit in front of your ladies? I imagine you. Oh, uh, bro, I've been shitting. I stand up when I wipe. I've been doing that since. Forever. I just found out that that was a phenomenon that you were supposed to sit down this whole time. I I stood and wiped my whole life. Really? Yeah. I never knew it was a thing until I saw somebody do it. They were standing up in the stall. I was like, "Are you standing up while you wipe?" Yeah. yeah. Why? And then why do you stand up? What's the reason? Um, I just I feel like I can get in there better. You know what I mean? What's your guys' situation? Are you going bidet and like wipes? Or are you oh, guys I go just wipes. straight toilet paper? I'm wipes. Yeah. Uh, I go toilet paper, dude. I got a bit of it. My ass is a total fucking... Oh, you got to go bidet then. My ass is the Middle East, dude. Someone that's wearing LLB, of course, would say yeah. that. <laughs> yeah. I have the cleanest butthole here. Sorry. You, you would love to see my LLB. <laughs> no, nah, my ass, dude. Like, I, I could never... You know how they say like you want to like invite germs in your body so you you have build an immunity. I don't think anybody's ever said That's that. Matt's told every girl he's ever had sex with. I'm like, no, nah, you're gonna like this, dude. And she's like, were you giving a guy head earlier? And I'm like, he loved it, dude. It's Pride Month. He came in under three minutes, as promised. I could probably knock a dude down about two and a half minutes. Two and a half for sure. If it was like if I was sucking my own dick, I can come so fast. No way, because you're gonna think about the fact that it's your own thing. Like if you were flexible enough to, or if there was a clone of you and you were clone. blowing yourself. Clone. Like I come fast. You'd be shocked what? at how fast. Yeah, because you no, would know your trigger. <laughs> I wouldn't be shocked at all. I'd be like, I'd have a fucking, I'd be like a stopwatch in like the old '90s movies where the kids run a track. Like, Twelve seconds. <laughs> Judge is getting quick out there. <laughs> Let's get a dog involved in this. And like, what? I don't know. Nine seconds. We're out of peanut butter. <laughs> so, what's your guy's best night as a comedian? Tonight. Tonight, yeah, just being here with I'm me, the not moment. having to see Mar. It's a good night. No, it's, we would. I'm, she's right Mar. over your shoulder on that banner. She's over I feel there. Like she's yeah, here. Yeah. She, True. Yeah. All right. Uh, best night of comedy. You you've had like more. You've you've worked with more big name comics. So like you have that like. Uh yeah, I had a cool one where. 
like two years in, I got to open for my favorite comedian. Like not even like uh, like one of my favorite comedians, but at the time I got to open for my favorite comedian, Bill Mark Cosby. But Bill Cosby, Bill Cosby. Yeah. Got a drink with him after the show. Don't remember much. I was like but, I'm so yeah. sleepy, and he's like, "We're gonna put that mouth to use," or you know how Bill talked. Uh, Bill Clinton, Bill Cosby. Uh, I hope the CIA isn't watching this. But I did open for this guy, Mark Norman, and it's Whoa, kind of yeah, I do like Mark Norman. Yeah, I was it was sick. Like I got asked. I was working with this booker for a while, and he like asked me to do it, and I think he kind of knew that I liked him, but I think he was also just throwing me a bone. And it was sick to go do it. I had a great set. Everything went like as good as possible. But when I brought him up, because he was the headliner and he had like three features in front of him. So I went up, did my set, went well, brought everybody else up. And then when I was going to bring him up, he was like, just say I've done this and that. Like he didn't have a lot of credits because he knew he was the headliner. So as I went to go bring him up, I was like so excited that I was doing this that I was like, hey, everybody, you ready for your headliner? Woo! All right, everybody, give it up for Narc Mormon. <laughs> and I screamed it. And everybody, you could tell, was kind of like, uh, all right, well, he's here, whatever. <laughs> And I got texts because he came, my ex-girlfriend came, and my buddy came. And I had three texts immediately like, you fucking loser, idiot. <laughs> nice job. I dude. remember we got in the car because you drove, too. That was yeah. the funny, too. We made you drive. We all got hammered. This yeah. was, like, your big night. Well, I did, too. And we yeah, were driving back, allegedly. And I remember, like, when we first got in the car, it was quiet for a little bit. And then your roommate, your friend, just it goes... I mean, Narc Mormon, and then, yeah, you could just see that it was just like eating you alive still. Well, that was funny too, because that night was, I've never, I'm a fucking complete loser, but you know, when people go to comedy shows, they just see you're on a lineup with like a higher up comic. So they assume you're like a real person. So he went up and he asked like everybody for autographs. And then he came to me last to ask for an autograph. I think just cause he's like, I asked all of them. I'll ask this dude too. And I had never signed one. And like, they're all around me. So I was like ready to talk shit to them. Like, yeah, it's just kind of what I do, dude. But I went to go sign the dude's shirt. And as I went to sign it, the fabric folded, and I put a line through all the other autographs on the shirt. <laughs> and the dude, the dude looked at me like, "I don't even fucking want your autograph, dude. What the fuck?" And I'm like, Ugh. And then, "So yeah, that's about as good. That's my best night in comedy, unfortunately." At that point, you try to draw a dick, right? Yeah, I should have like, and it goes, mm, and like this. And, that. <laughs> and there's me riding it. And Did you get to actually talk to Mark or no? Yeah, I hung out with him in the green room stuff. Yeah, he's fucking awesome. Is he just like comedy the whole time? Or? He's like, I've opened for other headliners and you sit in the green room and they're pretty to themselves. The whole time we were in the green room, he's just running jokes by you. So you're kind of just like, you know, he's known as this like worksman comedian and you wonder if that's just talked up. But being in the green room with him, he is literally just like, is this funny? Is that good? Does this make sense? It's It was cool. What's What do you think the difference is between like somebody of that like super high level and like somebody who's starting? Is it just the reps that you put in or is it the brain's just I mean, different? It's the reps. It's you do have to just have that, like that thing that like Mark Norman just has his quirky thing that makes him Mark Norman. Like, mm -hmm. so like, and anybody can have that thing. And that's most of what open mic comedy is trying to find what your voice is and what your random right. thing is. But it's like, it yet yeah, is just so much repetition. Cause we've even seen it of just people that we maybe started with, or we've seen start after us. That, like, we'll say to each other, like, oh, so-and-so's starting to get it. Like, they're starting to see where the laughs are, what's really funny, rather than just, like, I wrote this, pause for laugh here. I wrote this, pause for laugh here. Like, I was always confused with that, like, when you know to pause. Because, like, Dave Chappelle talks about how important it is to just, like, l let the silence go. I would always be nervous. Like, if I were to try it, I would just talk too much. Because yeah. I would have to fill the silence. Yeah, I mean, neither of us is, like technically good at comedy like it takes forever to get actually good at it but the the small things you pick up on are things like that where like you don't need to be a motor mouth as much i mean it's not like a thing like you've learned you're like now i know it but like there are instances where you can recognize like damn i should have just chilled for a second and paused and just let them yeah listen but sometimes you get freaked out by the silence and you're like oh shit they think i'm gay they think i'm a pussy my dad's here especially like in a podcast you really can't let like a silence go as soon as there's like a a gap you have to kind of like fill it with words mm -hmm. yeah you can't let it go at all so i always love podcasts different. that don't give a shit about it because there's a couple i listen to and when i'm listening to it every single time i think my phone fucked up yeah. but then it makes so it makes me go back to the podcast and make sure so i like to think that it's a little bit of like extra marketing like they made me go look at mm -hmm. their thing again i don't know what's your podcast that you like like what's your favorite podcast besides obviously that rules and loving them what uh it, Matt and Shane's secret podcast, uh, Shane Gillis and mm -hmm. Matt McCusker. That's one of my top favorite ones. That I mean, but that's, I don't know, that's kind of the standard. If you're a Philly area comic, like, mm -hmm. I feel like everyone will say that. 
Uh, yeah, anything Matt Walsh is on, dude, where he's just hammering the fucking liberal movement, dude, as long as he can tell them what's what. <laughs> okay, come on, guys. Having fun here. Any Fox News is, is whatever they promote. Had to lose it up. We got too much serious business talk for a second. <laughs> Matt I was like, you know, uh, I don't really think Alex Jones has a podcast per se, but, you know, whatever he's doing. <laughs> it's so funny because Matt Walsh is famous for asking people, like, what is a woman? I'm like, you, dude, you keep asking questions. Shut the fuck up, lady. <laughs> Have you guys ever, what's like the worst heckle you've ever gotten? Has there, has there ever been like a really bad heckle where someone's like, yeah, you're fucking dumb. Uh, I did an entire set with my zipper down where you could kind of see my penis a little bit. So you heckled yourself? It was just <laughs> your own penis that was the heckle? No, I did an entire set and bombed. And like genuinely, like my zipper was down and I wear boxer briefs where I don't have the button on my boxer. And I don't think you could see my pee-pee, but, uh, oh, you're grabbing another little tasty treat. You want a little high noonsy? If you don't mind. Thank you so much. High noon skis, please. Uh, but yeah, I did the entire set with my little PP hanging out, not fully hanging so out. So no course. heckle happened. Matt's just talking about a time where his dick almost popped out. <laughs> he just wanted to bring his dick up again. It's been a while since heard, we talked about it. He thought you said schmeckle. <laughs> Guys, Guys I'm, we're talking cock. All right, let's get serious here, folks. But yeah, I did the entire set, and then after, like, I didn't get a single laugh. I bombed, and then when I came off stage at the very end of the show, everybody like kind of walks out and says like, "Hey, nice job, nice job," and everybody was avoiding contact, eye contact with me. Because they were so jealous of your penis size? No, they were just like, I can't believe this guy thinks this is any good at this. And then one lady walked by and came up. She was like, hey. And I was like, just, I needed one compliment. And she was like, your zipper was down the whole time. That was like hard to watch. I like I barely like, saw your penis. <laughs> well. It wasn't that cold here. I was sweating the whole time. I was like, it goes to a different school. <laughs> it it's actually a here. model in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> you, John, do you have like the worst cycle you've ever gotten? Uh, if your I dick was out without me there, I'm going to be so mad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I think I'm too, like, vanilla in my stand-up comedy that it's, like, nobody's going after me. You know what I mean? I, I don't know. It's, like, I do have a joke that is a 9-11 joke that every once in a while it takes some people a while to come around on the joke. Uh -huh. So, like, I've heard a few people in there be like, whoa, come on, buddy. And I'm like, just sit. Wait, I'm going to make this It's been 22 funny. years. I mean, yeah, like, how many people were really died? Yeah. And it wasn't. <laughs> Relax. <laughs> how many people have to die, you know, for yeah. it to be. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are not patriots, dude. <laughs> what are you talking about? I talk about 9-11 in every set. I never forget, dude. True. <laughs> so, do you guys have any weird kinks in the bedroom? No, I just, you know, a little bit of karate every once in a while. I like how like I, a chop. I've asked you this question on your podcast and you got like, no, no, no I, I think you, you just flat out asked me what porn do you watch? Yeah. <laughs> I, I, you were like, bat, you were like, uh, uh, I don't I'm, think I have a good enough answer. That's the thing. I, I'm a very vanilla guy. Like I just like getting the fuck out of there. Too. <laughs> That's probably my kink is like, are we almost done? I'm so tired. And I, I'm, again, it comes back to like, I hope you like me. My girlfriend, who I've been with for a year, who loves me dearly. I'm like, dude, I just got to get this done so you don't hate me at the end of it. <laughs> Plus she's sleeping and the whole fucking. <laughs> you have to hold her down and say, quit moving. Yeah, she's, no, she goes to sleep quick. I don't have to put that much force. So I want to play, <laughs> so play a game with you guys, which we talked about while I was on your show. It's called Don't Look Away. Oh, I knew you were going to fucking do that. We were talking about it in the car ride here, and he was like, he's going to show us a poopy bullet. Damn, I so, love how you ease into that, too. You're like, what is a silly thing you like in the bedroom? Ready to watch a lady shove apples in her butthole? <laughs> Did I nail it? Did I uh, it? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to remove our headphones so we can hear it, because we obviously didn't play the volume. Oh. And then we're going to have one of you guys give a play-by-play -play of the video. Who wants to go first? There's three videos, so we'll each do it once. I'll give it a rip. All right, Matt. We're going to go with you first. So just let everyone know because, again, they can't see what's happening. People at home cannot see what's going on right now. All right. Folks, we got an art teacher sitting in the middle of the woods. Uh, she has a nice map below her, a bunch of apples. She's using some lubrication on those apples, getting them nice and lubed up. No! Oh! They give you no time to wait. It's in her. <laughs> Where's that string coming from? So she's pooping it out. It's a Granny her. Smith, too. It's a Granny Smith coming out of her Granny... Okay. Oh, that's I thought it, the asshole was the. Oh, oh that's the prolapse anus. See oh, how the apple came out? Hey, that's just a shame. They know they say, folks, if you love what you do, you'll never work again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, two at once. Another oh, one. Five. Four. That's four it's, apples out the ass. Yeah, this is no. Johnny Appleseed's aunt that he doesn't allow to legally talk to. Oh, another one's coming out. I think that's just, just a baby. That's just. Oh, oh, oh. Whoa. <laughs> I, I promise you guys, Pearl Labs Anus is if you came on, and here it is. Yeah. I mean, it looks like a big uh, cornucopia of worms that's about to explode. Am oh. I commenting this one? Uh, <laughs> I, I, I didn't. What happened? Did I fuck with it? That is my bad. 
Oh no, Matt. I was holding. Oh, it we gotta watch it all over again. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear him during it? Um, I threw your mics, but it wasn't loud enough. Oh, my bad. If we can run it back, we can run it back. <laughs> 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 Let's just go to the next one. Just the loop of the. <laughs> all right. Do you want to do it again? What do you guys think? I'll do it again. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, we already know the the surprise is already I mean, there. I can re- I can come up with a whole. I'm new sure rendition. you have no shortage of disgusting videos for us, right? We got another one. Let's go to the <laughs> oh! next one. All right, Johnny. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's a great day at the ballpark. <laughs> what we got here is a man who clearly has an alien life form growing in his testicles, uh-huh. and the penis of that looks <laughs> like a goose neck. If you could take the neck of a goose and turn it into peni. That's what this guy has. And he's coaxing out the tip. And it, he's got some sort of IV drip uh, connected to it. Oh. I can only assume that is ketamine that is going directly into his balls. This is Joe Rogan. He has gone beyond <laughs> doing mushrooms. And, Such a hero. And, you know, going the deep dive of uh, DMT. He's now just doing ketamine directly into his nuts. Yeah, this is Bob Lazar, the <laughs> guy who found aliens. This is the spacecraft that he found. <laughs> this looks like that baby bird that we found dead in the parking lot earlier. <laughs> So what's he? He's just showboating? Yeah, he's, just, he's a real <laughs> show He has huge nuts. If, you're, if you guys can't see, obviously you yeah, can't. Can. So is that, I, I think, I'm guessing what it is, is he's like those guys that fill their biceps with uh, yeah, I think like that's saline, what he's, yeah. and then they end up dying because they get it from like a third world country. Yeah, yeah. this is like most of the time I spent on like Omegle growing up. <laughs> what's the weirdest thing you guys did to make your dick look bigger? Because this is definitely up there. Uh, yeah. A lot of praying. Uh, <laughs> when I was a kid, you know. Just at the end, I'd be like, make sure my mommy and daddy are happy. I hope I do go to my math test. And if I can get an inch or two, Lord, that'd be nice. I don't know. I think it, just to make it feel bigger, you got to belly flop onto the girl. You got to get in there quick so it's like real quick. Like, you know, she's, you know, obviously. Girls respect the smush. They, yeah. they respect yeah, you, a good mush. Yeah, they get in there and you throw a fucking people's elbow down. Sexually. People's elbow. There it is. That's, that's what I'm saying. That's where the name came from. All right, Matt, here we go. Oh, dear oh. God, love. Paint us a word picture of what's on the screen right here. By all means. What's for dinner? Says the caption, <laughs> and they just want to know: Did you order the meat lovers? <laughs> this is—I'm uh, not entirely sure. It looks like a vajing. Oh, There's some things growing, so and she has what appears to be maggots. Uh, and again, it is Pride Month, so I just want to make sure clearly I said maggots. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> oh, this is just the sweetest hand job of all time. Yeah, that's very, very nice. Just a dude. couple at a bus stop getting a hand job. Just yeah. playing with this baby bird. You know what? If this isn't me in 40 years, I did something wrong. It's an older couple, so I mean, this is eternal for all of us here. This is one of the. Dude, if they re elect Joe Biden, that's what we're going to be saying. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> we got. What is that? Oh, we have a soundtrack. Oh, she's she has. This is just where she has chickens, or she has eggs in her butt, and she's yeah. just pooing them out. Uh, it's an amazing. <laughs> Actually, in some circles, this is uh, this is improv comedy. <laughs> I think for like most yes, of my childhood, and comedy for most of my childhood, yeah. I thought this is what a little Mark Norman special for us. Ah, this place wrecked them. Oh my god, that is a, um, that's it, all the vaginas. That's, that's all the a vaginas. gray vagina. That's one of the Easter Island heads. Just <laughs> <laughs> it looks like a Dr. Seuss a man character. putting a foot in putting an a ass foot in your girlfriend's ass. This, this is, is the, actually uh, how most NFL kickers uh, work at the combine. Yeah, that was for that '70s show. The dad from that '70s show. What is this? Is just Matt. <laughs> it's just so fun. I just got my beef nougat hanging out. Dude. Most of these look like if you could mash a sea creature into genitals. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's, a, like that's, that's a Gorgon from thing. From Stranger Things. Things. I was going to say Stranger Things, too. Yeah. What's it called? <laughs> it, that is a flower. <laughs> the, what, that's what they talk about when they say that's right. a girl lost her flower. The female anatomy <laughs> yeah, is that something falls else. Off. Well, now that we're all turned on. Yeah, dude. That, yeah. Was, that was hot. I got to run to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that, fellas. How did you guys feel about that? Was it a good game yeah, for you bad. guys? I felt real bad. Didn't like <laughs> I didn't enjoy it that much. <laughs> we invited you on our podcast. We had fun. We joked around. You show us eggs out of poop holes. I'd like to take back the uh, the the sex brag that I had. I don't think I'm going to have sex for months now <laughs> after having watched that. Dude, watching that stuff to like find it, you know, some people would think it's like funny. Mm-hmm. It like turns me off for a while. Yeah, Try I can to, imagine. Because <laughs> those weren't the first videos I watched. You know what I mean? I have to go through a, a bunch of them. I really do have <laughs> Plus, to go Plus, how many times you have to stop, <laughs> masturbate, you know. I'm gonna be like, I told my parents I, was, I had to stop at their house today and I was like I'm doing a podcast right now they're like how was the podcast I'm like different <laughs> I feel I feel different oh, jokes on you guys I was actually just watching the Adam and Eve ad on the right side of the screen the whole time I know what the Quitter. code is for 40% off if you want it <laughs> if you guys are curious yeah it's prolapse <laughs> so 
Oh, you guys are both in relationships. John's married. <laughs> what a <Yes>. transition. <laughs> what a transition. So I love what these questions are going to be now. Let's go. <laughs> Matt's in a relationship. Yeah, dude. Is there anything like that you guys want to try inside the bedroom that your significant other won't try? Uh... Probably like my friend Darius coming in. (laughs) Just being a part of the team. (laughs) Yeah, just just being the starting center for our team. Uh, I don't think so. I I don't know. I... I so I was at a golf outing recently, (laughs) and I won. (laughs) So they'll do like uh, raffles at the end, and I bought like an arm's length of tickets for like twenty bucks, whatever they do. And I just started dropping stuff in baskets, and I ended up winning first a tie dye T shirt pack, which I was like, great, me and my family can tie dye T shirts. Then I won the uh, pleasure pack that some pervert mom decided to enter this into the raffle. Yeah. So I came home with just a box of like various lubes, a rubber ducky that's also a vibrator, mm. which that's got to ruin rubber duckies for you for the rest of your life, right? Or make them better. True. Yeah, then you think that, that's just looking at every splish splash. Every nail. Don't say splish splash. <laughs> Take it a bath. <laughs> yeah. So Did you just pour your. Oh my god, you're cooking with grease. Baby. But like nothing in that box made me want to be like, let's get into these. Let's get weird. It yeah. was just like, isn't this silly? I think I'm too silly to ever have a crazy kink. See, before starting the podcast, I didn't have like kinks, and I never like really did sex toys. It wasn't my thing. But hearing on this show, there's a lot of sex toys. A lot of like. People are like super sex positive, and uh, that's a weird. Th- that's a weird way to say I like to have sex, isn't it? Yeah, sex positive, I'm sex negative. I sex think we should positive. all stop. We should <laughs> we, knock we it should off. know more. Yeah, ew, guys, <laughs> enough of that. Yeah, yuck, girls. First off, ew. gross. God gave you two hands, you fucking pussies. We've <laughs> seen what they do with their asses and pussies on there, dude. We saw the videos. That's yeah, what they do. Only one gentleman was getting weird with his genitalia. That's kind of funny. Like you always hear about women who like they say they cheat in a relationship because they're not getting what they want, and you're like, oh, it's got to be worst case scenario. <laughs> I bet you every single this one of those women are in relationships. What they want is eggs crammed like, into their butt. Well, they're like, if I can't cheat, this is what I'm doing, big dog. <laughs> I'm, I'm playing with the B flaps, and it's going on the internet, and I'm putting the title, What's for Dinner? <laughs> Would you rather your girl cheat on you and nobody knows beside you, or your girl is a porn star and she tapes your guys' sex sessions and puts them out there and everybody knows it's you? Is my face in it? Yes. everybody. Well, everybody knows it's you, so. Mm. Uh, I'll take the other. Just because yeah. I'm not always putting in out there performances, you know what I mean? So <laughs> you rather your girl just cheat on you and only you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. That's I, fine. Yeah, but you got. I don't be, want my boys to call me out and be like, "Yo, forty three seconds in, you <laughs> did this. Pretty bad. You did this one weird move. What was that? Like, I, that's what I'm more worried about. Like, not my family's hearing anything. It's just yeah. my my boys seeing it and being like, "Dude, did you really say come to daddy? Like, <laughs> yeah. yuck. I'm a little bit more career focused than he is, so yeah. I would be on the internet so I get more content out. So I'll be behind there True. and I'll be like, "Took an Uber here, actually. Uber's weird, isn't it, guys?" <laughs> Tired of working, just terrible Tuesday sex. Be in the middle of sex, like that's a real. Get that one. That's a short. <laughs> working your Republican jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good time to get political during sex. <laughs> like, man, this pussy's tight. This thing's conservative, baby. <laughs> so, are you guys normally in your relationships, are you the person that has been broken up with, or do you normally break up with the person? Uh, in my younger years, I was getting. Actually, no. I think I've been the one to break up. You're not going to take a shot. I've never taken a shot. Or, I've, never, I've never broken up with anyone before. Are you serious? Are you like the way that dudes are where like, I'll just wait till she hates me and let her do it? <laughs> I think all, all my breakups. Bro, that's so the move, dude. You're just like, I'll just like stop doing anything she likes until she does it. And then I'll be the victim and be like, you're such a bitch. But I get where you're coming from. I get where you're coming from. <laughs> That's what it is, isn't it? You are better off without me. You're right, babe. <laughs> this is totally your idea. No, I'm just, yeah. I just i have been in a lot of relationships. Like, it's been because I was, so at 18, I joined the military, and I moved around a lot. So I didn't really see a point of, like, staying. Well, you were in a committed relationship with your nation as a patriot. I was yeah, married damn, to America. Well, damn thank you for troop, your service. Damn oh, hero, yeah. You're, you're fucking salute. I know. Right? I was sitting in the presence of a hero. <laughs> yes. Yeah, set up straight, sir. Yeah, I, I apologize. I don't <laughs> want to sit up straight. I, I was like, cut how, my many hair. People, how many people really died on 9-11? <laughs> <laughs> like, right, well. Who knows? I mean. <laughs> yeah, they know. this. <laughs> <laughs> What about you, John? Uh, I think mine were always like, it just rode out so long that like when I did get broken up with, I was just like, yeah, I saw this coming. <laughs> it was like, my fault. Yeah, you know what? This probably should happen sooner. You're right. Yeah, I don't think I ever did the dumping. I think I was always the dumpy. Yeah, I think I was I was ripping dumps on <laughs> shouties. 
Uh, yeah, I mean, there's I did the what, kink. That's the one that. <laughs> yeah, true. I did. You know, that's what you, that's what you have to do, though. But I think you just have to like nut up and just be like, all right, because usually, you know, I'm. I did all mine when I was younger, and for the most part, they were just like, I just want to be single so I can go do whatever I want. Right. So you kind of have to come up with, like, the nicest way to dress that sentence up to a person where you can't just outright say, like, my pee-pee's hungry. <laughs> you just have to be like, oh, I don't know. It's just not, like, what I want. I'm a 21-year-old in college breaking up with a girl. I'm like, I just need to, like, focus on me. It's like, focus on what, dude? We're drunk <laughs> nine days a week. Yeah. What are we focused on? We're failing every class. I think I was treated getting dumped the same way I did getting fired. I was like, nah, I saw this coming. You're right. <laughs> I, I should be fired. Yeah, yeah, I haven't cared for a few months now. You're right. <laughs> He's asking for severance pussy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever done that where you knew you were going to break up with somebody, so you decided to have sex first and then broke up? Post? With them? Yes. Um, no, I don't think so. I think I kind of just anticipated that we would still have sex afterward. You were like, I can still call you tomorrow, right? I was like, we're done for right now <laughs> and other people, but tomorrow. <laughs> I'm going to be horny tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm still a man. <laughs> I have my needs. I caught a couple chicks pooping out eggs. I'm, I'm pretty up. <laughs> pretty worked up over <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I got a new thing. <laughs> Do you have any eggs at home? I mean, no, no, you can win me, <laughs> yeah. you can win me back. True. You, That's how I get it back. Yeah. I'm like, if you really want this to happen, dude, you're going to go to Target right now. You're going to drop $12. <laughs> I understand inflation. It's not my fault. Get Democrats, the cage you know what I mean? Get cage free. I really want good eggs. <laughs> so, all right. So you guys talked about like your favorite podcast. Actually, Matt, did you? I don't think you actually brought up your favorite podcast. I made some shitty joke about fucking Matt Walsh being mean to us. Uh, <laughs> who's your, like, your favorite comedians? Is it still Mark Norman your favorite? I love Mark Norman, Shane Gillis, Matt McCusker. Uh, like a lot of those New York guys that have been blowing up the past like three or four years. Because uh, I do think they're kind of changing. Like when I started, I, there was that like tenor of like how you could do comedy was very... Again, it sounds like I'm doing a bit, but like it was left-leaning. There were like certain points in certain ways that were the only ways that you could get successful in comedy by like kind of falling into that niche or like that side. But of the past like two or three years, it feels like they've been funny enough where they're just superseding that where it's like, you can just be funny. Mm -hmm. And as long as it's funny, you can get carried to the next level. So those types of guys have, I think done that. What about you, John? Uh, I mean, it's a lot of the same comics, but I've always outside of that loved like Kyle Kinane's one of my favorite comics of mm -hmm. all time. And every time he puts out a special, it's nice because, like, he's kind of, he rides the line of, like, that, not, like, a bro comic, per right, se, right. like, but he's also in that, like, punk rocky, like, artsy kind of lane, like, the alt-comic scene kind of. And he it's gets like, me. Yeah. But, like, he gets he gets respect from, like, both sides. That's why I always liked him. Just an incredible joke writer. Yeah, I've, I mean, I mean, my favorite, I, we said, like, Unoriginally, Dave Chappelle is obviously my favorite, but that's just yeah. Bill Burr. That's like saying like Seinfeld is still one of my favorites of all time. We argue about it all the time. It's like even if it is like now some of the stuff that Seinfeld did would be kind of hacky. Like, but I, it's it's like that for everything. It's like music had to kind of suck before it was awesome. Like, yeah, I never really got into Seinfeld. I think mine's is always like nostalgic. That was the first thing. Like my dad used to show me Seinfeld's HBO specials when I was like eight years old like mm -hmm. way too young to watch him not that his material was like anything crazy i'm a babes yeah <laughs> well i think it's just like the it's comics like that and again you don't want to shit on them but it's like as a comedian especially when you start to get to a level where you are kind of good and you're not bombing really much anymore like seinfeld i think most of the comics that i've talked to who share a similar sentiment of not liking him are like if you put me and him on just a regular showcase i, I bet you a decent amount of times i could have a better set than he could just because he is, he's been so curated towards his fan base and he has this air about him that kind of can carry him. But I do think there's like some level of like, it's, I don't know. I sound like I'm shitting on one of the greatest comics of all time. He's coming for you, Jerry. <laughs> yeah, Jay. <laughs> Be on the lookout, dude. You're not the only one that likes young girls with huge boobs, Jerry. Yeah, we also like those. And we like to squeeze them too, don't we, guys? Yeah. We sure love them. And guys, and what do we always say when we squeeze them on the count of three? One, two, three. Oh, done. there it is. Okay. <laughs> no, I get what you're saying, though, because it's like, it, it's the same thing. It's the reason that Chappelle can come out and do a special every year. Because, like, if you really cut down, like, what he's saying, it's probably only, like, 20 minutes of material. Yeah. But it's 40 minutes of him doing Dave Chappelle. Yeah. So it's, like, that's the reason he could put something out every single year. Whereas, like, some comics have to, like, build something new over, like, three, four years, then release a special. Yeah. He, he just always, he could go on TV now and go live with nothing and have millions of people tune in. 
if Dave Chappelle did anything, yeah, I would laugh at it just because yeah. it's Dave Chappelle. I, yeah. He's he's grown my laughter over the and years. And he's so almost to the point now where he's transcended like stand up comedy. He's just like a public figure bigger than comedy. Mm-hmm. So it's like it's tough to like, but at the same time, he's still doing like New York nightclubs and stuff. So that's a, that's always the cool thing about comedy too is like you don't hear about like a lot of musicians that like play arenas, go right. to their hometown and go to you know a local bar. And do a show where like yeah. these guys in New York will go play like to the biggest crowds, best comedy clubs, arenas, and then they'll go to the cellar in New York, which is a basement bar. Really, when you break it down, like yeah, but sure, but he can do anything, right? Like he can go anywhere, anytime, and he, because he has the freedom to do that. Is there like a best comedy club that you guys have worked at? Helium in Philly is. I mean, I love it there, and it's lauded. Like whenever you hear people talking on podcasts about like good city clubs like good like a good feel to them everyone always says helium so i love it there i mean i've only done outside of that i've done like comedy zone in harrisburg i love that that's just because i that's where i started comedy so it's like it's a little different the crowds are a little different out there mm-hmm. that was so it's always fun to play around with it but yeah helium and punchline's great so i'm just gonna suck all the dicks of all the philadelphia in, in clubs <laughs> yeah i mean but they, they all like fit certain needs of comedy because comedy's gotten so big now that it feels like there's different parts of it that need to be fulfilled where like helium it seems is like really people are going there to see their favorite comic like they might not be huge stand-up fans but for the most part audiences are there to see their favorite comic and then punchline kind of feels like it serves the need of like people might not be into comedy they want to see what it's like they want to go to a cool venue and punchline kind of fills that need and then i worked at soul joel's a lot during the pandemic where that was cool where it was just Nothing else was open. There was nowhere else to see a show. So it's just people sitting in this fucking sand pit. Genuinely, it was just a sand pit where they bring their own chair, their own booze. They're in an airplane hangar. The stage itself is just like the bed of an 18-wheeler. And everybody there is just like, I just love comedy broadly. That's all I care about. Yeah, so it was like, like true comedy right. fans there. Sounds like Burt Kreischer would have a, something to say about that. I think Burt did Soul Joel's, didn't he? He like might At the have. beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. All the big names, because when New York shut down, like all the comics from... New York that you love, like Big J Okerson, mm-hmm. Ari Shafir, all them came down and did it in Royersford, PA, because it was mm-hmm. like the only place where they could do comedy. Yeah, I mean, our buddy, our one of our good friends, Brendan Donigan, opened for Louis C.K. Yeah, at this outdoor sandpit with Fucking like crazy. a train that ran in the background that you would have to like pause in the middle of a set. Yeah, to wait for a train to pass so that you could do your next joke. <laughs> Is there like a dream comedian you guys want to open up for? That's a good question. Alive or dead? Oh, that's an even harder one now. <laughs> Probably just Matt Rife, dude, at this point. <laughs> Mr. Rife, dude. That's the dick you want to suck? Are you familiar under- with Matt Rife? You know, like, no, I do not know who that is. He's this hot hunk of tits and mm. balls that everybody either loves or hates right now because he's, he genuinely Oh, like, whoa, wait. I know. The like yeah. 20-year-old, good-looking guy. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah he's yeah, got yeah. a jawline for days. <laughs> yeah, too good-looking to do stuff. Yeah. Gorgeous dude. And his entire fan base is like mostly women. Of course. Which, you know, somebody's and on me. this. And mm. me. And you, you like this guy, huh? I, I mean, I like the way he looks. Oh, okay. I think I can get him to come pretty fast. I think I, I think I know him enough, you know what I mean? <laughs> okay, now we're getting sucked in the fucking... <laughs> now we're talking. Uh, but yeah, I, I mean, somebody like him, like I just... Would like to open for a fan base that young. That sounds a little weird. That's a little, that's a little Chris D'Elia on that one, dude. But, yeah, Matt Roy would be kind of sick. <laughs> I was going to say, just say Chris D'Elia. <laughs> yeah, Craig, Craig D'Elia, dude. Uh, for me, I'll go back to it. It'd probably be Kyle Kinane. Because, like, mm-hmm. he's been my favorite comic for a long time. To the point where it's, like, I'd want to... I think a, a that like an attaboy from him would feel pretty cool. Because, right, right. like... I try to be not I try to be him, but it's like I would like to be his style. If I had to compare it, I don't know. Do you guys yep. ever hear like things about like bigger comedians, like more well known comedians when you're working in these comedy clubs? Like like maybe like you're a, fi- a fan of Kyle Kanan and someone's like, Oh, I've worked for, with him before and he's an asshole. Everybody's got like their opinions on that. And it really it's like anything, it's like you can't make a judgment until you've also worked with that person. Yeah. yeah. Cause it's like you could have somebody like there's been people that I've had people say, like, oh no, that person's actually really nice. Like mm-hmm. whoever it might be that you're like, oh, I think they would be a piece of shit. But it's like, yeah, you could also just catch them like they're in Philly, they just left their family. It's like a Thursday night, the show's half sold, like you're catching them on like the worst night. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I've always kind of just I'll listen to when people say that, but I've learned to like if I get a chance to work with them, even if it's like local comics that we know, 
Like there's ones where like you have these, all these ideas in your head about them and then you actually meet them and do a show with them and you're like, ah, oh, you're not bad or the opposite. You're like you fucking suck. Right. <laughs> I'm just always jealous of the people who get to work with the comics who are like fucking hammered or off their ass when they're working with them. I want to have a story like that where I'm just working with a dude who's just like zanned out. And I'm like, yo, he called me gay and then gave me a high five. I'm like, that's so cool, dude. It was a great makeout session. <laughs> it was the softest lips I've tasted in the West. <laughs> Is there a worse comedy club that you guys have ever performed in? <sighs> I'm trying to think of the worst. Well, during the pandemic, there was an open mic at the softball field near my house. So mm, that was a if tough you want to call that a comedy club, that was pretty bad. Yeah, that's tough, dude. Getting sunburnt while you're bombing <laughs> is just a real kick in the taint. But you get to hang out with a bunch of lesbians. I mean, it sounds yeah. like a good nah, yeah. No, lesbians are real. No, it was dude. just a bunch of sad guys in a park, and then maybe a few women would show up. Yeah. Oh, like a bunch of 40-year-old guys who just are trying to escape their kids. And yeah, I'm the only 37, dude. Calm down. I'm not, I'm, I'm not saying you. It's not, a, it's not always about you and your, your hair. It, it's all Well, hold on, me. you supple little broad. How old are you? <laughs> Sub a little broad. That's what my daddy calls me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 32. Oh, okay. All right. You guys are around the same age range. He just said 37, right? Yeah. You yeah. don't. Matt's not good at math. Yeah. Or how, old, how old's Matt? Ten, like ten years. In my twenties. Right? In my twenty-seven. Twenty-seven. Like in yeah. my twenties. Yeah. So I'm in between both of you guys. So yeah. Let's make that. You know, not we'll just metaphorically. Yeah. Let's just make it physically. That's what you guys <laughs> have to look forward to. Fucking pretty good hair. <laughs> <laughs> if I get the gen if my kids have your gen in this scenario, I'm going to get your guys' genetics through sex. I'll yeah. give. I'll give whoever you oh, want true. knocked up some of my genetics. I'll toss a. I'll toss you a seed. If you guys were to take each of <laughs> each person's one genetic at their table, like say we were to make a baby with John. Yeah. Okay. What genetic would you want your kid to have with from John? <laughs> that. Ooh, uh, that's a great question hmm. i think all right this is good that we've gotten to this part of the podcast where we can all <laughs> now we're getting to the part where we can all appreciate our yeah. good qualities let's do that okay a couple shots of jim b and next thing we're, all, we're kissing on the lips <laughs> i would say for johnny Bowie, i got mine if you want me to go go ahead yeah I, if i had off. a son i'd want him to have your blind confidence that you have in the funniest situations <laughs> there's so many times like being with Matt where I'm like, he's so confident right now as he's just doing the worst at something mm -hmm. or as a redhead in a worse situation, just blind confidence. Like this is great and everything's all right. <laughs> like, stage, you think I do this? No, I, oh. it's great. Cause I know that while on the outside, you have that like total confidence. I know right. inside you're just getting murdered by anxiety. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So yeah, if I could just get just the blind confidence part, not the, the anxiety. All right, no, 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 do it for me. Do it for me. Uh, beard. Yeah, okay. it's got yeah, to be the beard. beard. Yeah, the beard's good. The beard's yeah. good. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little upset. I thought you had great was teeth be, too. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, I'm just thank you. seeing you that have now. Good teeth. Oh, thank hell, you. Dude. Thank you. I had braces twice. All right, <laughs> those are VA teeth. That's dude. simply too many times to have braces. <laughs> yeah, my mom made me get braces the first time with only four teeth, and then the second time, the day after I got my second full set out, bottom teeth got knocked out and I had to get shoved back in my mouth. Oh, why did she do that to you? Why did she knock my teeth out? Oh, she didn't punch you in the teeth. Are you saying she punched you in the no, teeth? I was playing football and I, I ran into somebody's elbow. You ran into somebody's elbow? And like, I, tackled, watch it. I tackled them though. So you watch it. Like, like, he actually still didn't have the ball though. So <laughs> things. <laughs> <laughs> Just some old guy walking by. Yeah. Ran into his kid. So what if, all right, Matt. So what about for John? What would you take from him? Well, first of all, I thought John was going to say about me, like, your height, you're taller. And he was like, you have this irrational, dumbass you're confidence. Barely, no, you're, you're barely. He, did, taller he gave you nothing physical. So nothing. He, he was like, you're an idiot. You have no idea what's happening around you and you think everything's good. And I'm I like, think that's mm. a great quality to have. Yeah, it's not bad. You're it's unflappable. Me. There it is. Un you, unflappable. I wish some of those pussies on the video were unflappable. <laughs> I think it was disgusting. Those were dude. delicious. Some of those were tri-flappable. <laughs> he's really trying to think hard about what he's going to compliment about you, John. Mm -hmm. There's a lot. How about this, dude? John's a great dad. I wish I had the paternal instincts that John had. How about that for a You will one day. I'm slowly instilling them in you, son. True, you are you guys just in. both think you're both hideous, don't you? Yeah. No, no I'm I really right. don't. I like John a lot. <laughs> I mean, the original name of our podcast was Handsome Idiots. So okay. it's like yeah, so it dumb that you guys one. changed that. Yeah, we know. Why we do you know. say that? Matt. Because it's such a good name. Everybody says that. And I thought it was the exact opposite where we thought we were just these totally. But it's one of those things is no one told you it was a great name when it was the name. You know what I mean? It's like that, like high school was great afterwards looking back on it. You're like, nah, most of it sucked. Like, <laughs> I mean, high school was great, but it did suck a lot for me. But yeah, your name was good. As no, as it is. It's we 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 always say it. We are very. We're not far away from just saying fuck it and throwing it right back up there as the name again. <laughs> well, you guys reached out the first time. I was like, that's a great name for. As soon as I saw the message, I was like, that's a great name for a podcast. Wow, that <laughs> is shocking to hear. I'm telling you, for the first first couple of years, I guess year and a half, everybody was like, I, anything you heard about it was from a negative perspective. So we're like, the oh, name, we yeah. 
I love the name. They said the content, but I also great. I, I also think it was a lot of tongue in cheek of like because the, the reason we named it Handsome Idiots originally was we would go to open mics and it's like by normal people standards we're you know sixes sevens eights on a good day at open mic comedy where it's like sad guys divorced guys women yeah. that can't have kids <laughs> like you got to be ugly to be funny we're like elevens at those shows so yeah. like people in, like in Central PA which that's a whole other factor is you yeah. get a lot of mutants out there. And they would be like, all right, cousin. come to the stage, handsome John. I'm like, say my fucking name. Like, I get it. I'm a little bit better looking than some of you. <laughs> but because it, it, oh. it, it puts you in a weird hole, though, going up there. Because it's already like, not that it's like, oh, it's hard to go up and be somewhat appealing on stage mm. and get laughs. But it's like, unless you immediately go up and you're like, I'm a fucking moron. Yeah. <laughs> like, everybody's like, what's this fucking guy that isn't 300 pounds overweight think he's better than me for you're like ah, damn it if you was, make a yeah. joke in the beginning because of your looks i do it every single set i open every single set with the same joke what's uh, what's his name he opened to for, set the tone he opened for tata ryan uh fuck. foster foster ryan yeah. foster he's yeah. actually coming on the show soon he he has to start off like as soon as he went up there i was like this fucking tall good looking guy what does he have to say see and, and then he says in the beginning all right i can i can now i can talk and that's something like you were asking about like how it long it takes to get good at it. It's like, you don't learn that until finally you've, one day you're like, fuck it. I just got to lean into whatever people see when I go yeah, on yeah. stage. And it could take five, six years. It could take 20 years. You could never figure it out of like, this is how people perceive me. Yeah. Not how I see it. You know what I mean? So now what do you have to talk about yourself when you get on stage? You have to go, oh, I'm redhead tall. I think I mostly I'll go on stage and I'll play it up. Like I'm a huge pussy. Like, I think that's what makes it somewhat endearing. And I'm, that's a genuine thing. I'll go up and I'm like, you see this like larger dude, this taller guy, whatever, with an annoying haircut. And I'm like, dude, I'm a pussy. I might be gay. I haven't figured it out yet. I'm still working on it. That's another thing. If you go on stage and you're like a regular looking guy, call yourself gay. You're cooking, dude. That's you'll also the, get to get on. Of the, tricks you'll, of the trick. You'll get to get on shows that only uh, some people can get on too. So there's that bonus. That hasn't worked <laughs> for me yet, dude. I haven't been on a zero Pridezilla shows. Have I gotten on yet? <laughs> Queer a palooza. I we were talking about I the other day. You on Pridezilla. Well, please, by all means. But we were talking about the other day, and this, like, actually last night, about don't all the the uh, uh, Pride Parade names sound like the way you used to bully your friends when you were a kid? Like you, Fatzilla. You'd see all your friends, and you'd be like, "Look at fucking Queer Fest 2023 <laughs> over here." And, like that's a real thing now. Like people are just going to this thing. Yeah, that's Le why lean into the gay. Yeah, if you're like, better. come on out for the gay bash. <laughs> you're like, wait, wasn't that a bad thing? Back in the day? <laughs> I don't think you can do that, can you? Can you say, I gay mean, bash at the beach. That would be pretty good. None but, of us can say that unless we do something to each other. You know what I mean? But even like the, what's happening right now, God bless, even what's happening right now, like when you used to say like, yeah, I actually do like science class. Like the bullies would picture you on a float in the middle of the road making out with a dude. And now that's just really happening. That's just, <laughs> that's gay now. It's crazy, but it's sick and it rules. And we love them at Pride Month. <laughs> that rules. So is there <laughs> is there like a worse PDA that you've seen? I I think all PDA is weird. So I've seen guys make out. I've seen girls make out. I've seen guys and girls make out. I think it's all gross. I mean, what's like the worst one that you've seen in, in person? One of the best ones I saw <laughs> was, uh, did you ever go to the Wing Bowl in Philly? Yeah. So Wing Bowl, for the viewers that don't know, is just uh, it starts at what six a.m. at the it's, Wells Fargo. Center? I started at three a.m. there before. You start drinking it, but like the actual wing bowl oh, yeah. starts at like six or seven a.m. So you get there at three a.m. to start drinking. You start drinking in the parking lot outside yeah. of Wells Fargo. Right? I took a train. I went over to my buddy's place at Temple, and we started drinking like a normal night of drinking at like nine o'clock. We went out, partied, went back to his apartment, slept for like an hour, woke up, and started drinking again. We hopped on the train down there. We go to the Jetro lot, which shout, shout out Jetro lot. So I do all my tailgating my whole life. Um, and they had all the tractor trailers parked there because it's like a loading dock in the back mm. of it. And you're walking along and there's just like guy pissing, guy throwing up, guy pissing, guy railing his girlfriend in between tractor trailers at seven in the morning in February. And we just stopped. And it was like one of those things where you're like, <laughs> I'm not like watching. I'm just like witnessing this thing that's happening right now. And all of us just start clapping. And then we're like, Oh, we're just probably all part of an this assault. Is, this is probably a sex <laughs> yeah. crime. At this this point. is probably something we shouldn't be associated with. Let's get the fuck the out of here. Dr. Phil's going to interview us about this. Yes, yeah, so that was the best and worst one I ever saw because he was going to town. We caught him like mid-stroke. Like he was digging. <laughs> oh, no. Not digging. <laughs> That's one time you really have to come face if you're doing it outside. Matt, what about you? Uh, I was in high school and I was at like a party. Uh -huh. And we were all like sitting on this bench outside. And it was like an actual like where the... 
I don't know what they're called. A picnic table. Did you say you were at high school or in high school? I was at a high school party. I was 25. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, don't okay. ask. And the girls were super mature for their age. They, were <laughs> they really all cool. looked way older now. They're really cool. And I was like, I brought the fucking handle of alcohol. And they're like, whoa, you're the man. And then I was like, whoa, this is crazy. Are we going to kiss? No, but I was at a party in high school while at a high school. And we were at like a picnic table and this kid that was in our grade that was like a weird dude. And his he was dating one of our friends, like a girl that was like a nice girl. And I remember they were just like sitting there and like you could just kind of tell like he was kind of behind her. She was facing, they were both fa facing the same direction and he was behind her and he started like rubbing leg and then the hand got closer and it was just, I'm telling you, I've never heard breathing this heavy in my entire life or there's like, like there's like gravelly. Oh dude. And everybody's having conversations, but at the side of the, your, your eyes, you're like, Oh God, he's really, he's really getting it. I mean, I'm talking asthma attack level of breathing. Matt was actually just talking about his own breathing. <laughs> As yeah. he was watching it. This is also the most, like, my friend did this. It was me, dude. I was, <laughs> I was trying to get some It was allergy season. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. But he did it for probably, like, 15 minutes until I was a dickhead. And I was like, you got to stop. And he was like, oh, yeah, okay. Sorry about that one. We, we had a friend that had a hot tub when we were in high school. And there was a lot of times where, like, there would be a couple in there with you. And mm -hmm. you'd be, like, halfway through. Like, everyone's just bullshitting and joking. And there would be, like, a lull. And you're just like... Oh, you've been jerking them off the whole time we're in here, haven't you? And they're yeah. just like, no, 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 I swear to God. We're like, stand up right now. <laughs> and they wouldn't stand up, so. I probably had my own bubbles. worst PDA, actually, now that I think about it. When I was nine years old at summer camp, I saw Aladdin for the first time, and I'd only seen white women in my life, and I saw an animated brown woman who was gorgeous, and I touched my own body in the back of the class. <laughs> 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 to completion. Nine-year-old completion of the back of the class. Looking Matt at found a whole new world that night. <laughs> I, found a whole new, I, was ride, I was ready to ride her carpet, for God's sake. Yeah, dude, I was in the back of there. I had nothing to do with the cum. I just put it back in my pocket. So what was your, what was your question? Uh, I mean, <laughs> you were getting the pocket cum? <laughs> we, we were getting there. Actually, was one of my next questions. We was talked like, pocket pudding when you were on our episode. So uh, yeah, then we're going to yeah, talk we pocket cum. <laughs> Are we all going to hit sit here and say that Aladdin's... What was her name in the movie? Jasmine. Aladdin? Jasmine. I was going to say what Earl. A beautiful yeah, was woman. Yeah, yeah, Jasmine's real hot. Yeah. Unbelievable. Definitely nothing like the real brown women. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> is there any, have you ever gotten in trouble for a joke that you told on stage at work? Uh, no, but like the job I got laid off from, <laughs> Fired. uh, luckily it wasn't a part of it, but like everyone started to try to, or started to find out that I was doing comedy. Cause like one guy knew and then he leaked it to somebody else. So, like, everybody's like, we want to come see you. I'm like, you'll never show up. Yeah. So, it's like everyone always says they're going to go see you, and they never do. So, it's almost like I wish I would get in trouble for, I don't know. Yeah, I've never had anything in trouble-wise, but uh, I recently recorded a song. <laughs> <laughs> it's called They, Them, Sir. <laughs> he <laughs> wishes it was called that. No, it was cool. It was a good opportunity. Uh, I did a song with a big Philly uh, local legendary guy and everybody in my work found the song and was playing it one day when i came into office ladies and gentlemen go on spotify and look up flippy flops that's all we'll say and matt peoples you're welcome how look, racist is it it's not at all it's not at all not even not, it was recorded with it's, a cheesesteak mogul you ever so went uh, i don't in, know if he's allowed to talk about who it was in the 90s the song we are the world we are the children yeah it's, it's going to be the song that brings everybody together. People are saying it's the opposite of that. If there's any song that can drive people <laughs> can make, further apart. It can make everyone mad. It's, I'll tell you this. It's the funniest. If there's ever a song you could pick to commit suicide to, it's the funniest <laughs> song. It's the best way to go out. To get discovered. You ever, heard, you ever heard the song Rock Lobster? Rock Lobster. I mean, I'm just saying the word that I told now you. Now you told me the whole thing. <laughs> I feel like I know it. To be fair, I think that's the only lyrics to Rock Lobster. True. It fits that tenor. But yeah, that was, uh, I walked into work it. and they were all playing it. And I was like, oh my God, they know. How do you guys find working in a regular office? I'm guessing you guys have office jobs, right? Mm -hmm. And like turning off like the comedy side. Because I feel like in here, obviously, I talk a lot different than I would in a work office environment. I try to not talk at all in office. Yeah. Because I'll come off like this if I do talk for too long. How do you guys like keep that balance? I'm the exact same. I don't speak in my office yeah. very much. I like, and I kind of got the reputation of when I did get to know people, I just started to make it known, like, I hate being here. I know you don't want to talk to me. I don't really want to talk to you. I mean, some people you meet in your office, you do get along with. But for the most part, I'm like, if we have to speak, that's cool. If we don't talk at all, I would much prefer, you know, when like you're in these social dynamics where you feel like we're so close to each other, we should speak. Yeah. If we could both acknowledge, like, we don't have to do that. I don't want to do that. That's, like, what the the sweet spot that I've hit in my office. Mm. 
Matt hates it because I'm the exact opposite. I'm an office ham, mm -hmm. bro. I, I will, with the hackiest jokes, I just, like, can't help myself but, like, be, like, the Ooh, funny guy. Like, oh, the weather's crazy. Well, here. and it's weird, too, like, because my office, I'm only in there, like, once every couple of weeks. Oh, so I got to, like, drop in, like, as I travel Aren't for you work. fired? No, the, my new job. New job. Oh, okay. Yeah. Last time I saw you, I think I was still looking for employment. <laughs> uh, new job. I travel for work or, like, I work from home and I go into the office every once in a while. So I always like, I'm like, I got to leave my mark. But it's also an office of just all dudes. So mm -hmm. like, it's the bros when I go in there. So I'm like, all right, I'm not going to go super offensive or anything like we talk about on the podcast, but I'm like, I'll go office offensive where they're like, I can't believe he just said that. He made that <laughs> pun during the CPR training. But I feel like you're like me where I don't know what that line is. Oh, I, I really have a, I have a lot of trouble with it. Yeah. Because I didn't used to talk like this at all. I used to be very reserved almost in every like part I of my life. I used to be Puerto Rican. I, I, was, I was having sex with Robbie for a long time. And then, Hi, Poppy. Am I right? And then I kind of like yeah, found this. Right. <laughs> then I found this voice in the podcast and I was like, hey. Uh, let's uh, just we talk about, there's still so many times where we, because like we'll start the podcast kind of like we did today where it's like just, you know, organic. We're having a conversation. But like we used to just like hit record be like, welcome back to handsome idiots. And I'm like, why yeah. the fuck do I do that every time? But you it, put like, on pod voice. It yeah. goes right into it. It's yeah. an I use that as like an anchor. Or like for the start of the show, because I don't know what to say in the beginning. When I first started, I was like, I don't know. Hey, what's up, guys? So I just had that. I have that line now where then I can start right. talking whenever I feel like. Started yeah. that way. Yeah, just like, rip a fucking burp. It's see farting in the I, mic. I've had like the last podcast I was on. Sorry, it wasn't your guys, but it was another one. I farted a lot. And <laughs> I, I led up to it you though. Said I, it so defeatedly. Like, I was. Oh, no, I, I, told I, I, I went fart. Black guys don't find farts nearly as funny as white guys. Too do. many they farts. Don't. That is true. Black dudes do not like farts and gay <laughs> and jokes. Gay shit, yeah, yeah. Uh, dude. I but on this podcast, I got to talk about shaving buttholes, and I led up to two farts. Two farts with a room full of black guys. Were they? <laughs> Sound like very loud, or were they just stinkies? <laughs> oh, I I always have loud farts, but they don't stink. No stinkies. Sometimes they do. See, I, th yeah, I feel this like the trade off, is, especially as they get older, the loud ones are just there; they're just present. But like the the silent ones are are murderous. My, I love laying those on people now. My <laughs> farts did not stink for the first thirty years of my life. That was my call. Really? Like that was my sign. Like if you did you, if you heard a Justin fart, 30? if you heard a Justin fart, you knew it was a guarantee. I would bet my life on it. You would not stink. One day at 30 years old, I was like, what the fuck was that? What do you think did it? What was the food that? I think I stopped working out and then I kind of just like, I lost my soul. You know what I mean? Ah, I so like, a little bit of life was coming out of those parts. <laughs> yeah, I was dead soul. on the inside yeah, finally. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're just releasing a little bit of it out. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what it was. It just, one day my fucking insides rotted. It just said, I'm not going to do this anymore. And now they're still loud and funny to me. My girlfriend can't stand them because now they stink. Yeah, that is funny. Like I, I fart in front of my girlfriend now and like, when we when I fart, it, it looks like we're taking like cyanide pills together. Like I'll look at her and she'll be like, "Please no," and I'm like, "There's <laughs> nothing else we can do." You've openly apologized like 11 seconds before farts have hit my nose in the yeah. car because we've gone to so many like podcasts and shows together, yeah. driving together, and like we'll just be driving. And it's we're joking, you know. Some podcast is playing lightly in the background, and I'll cheer Matt like, "I'm so sorry." Yeah, and I'm I like, mean, no, but like, what? What? We're gonna be on time, and then it just it's fucking it, like a cartoon. It's unbelievable. They're bad. They oh, that's it's like they, you talk about like you know you have the soul of like in a past life, you know you were somebody. My asshole was like an Italian mobster <laughs> that was like three hundred and twenty pounds, and then every time these things seep out of my body, everybody around me is like, "Why are you like this?" And I'm like, "That's just the way it happens, <laughs> sweetheart." It's gonna be your intervention one day. We're like, "Hey, we're here because we love you." I'm farting straight gabagool on my girlfriend at all times. Her five foot body can barely take it. I'm almost knock. She's on the ropes every time I fart. She's like, <laughs> Body shots on her. The best part is like you love like I can stay in my own smell, but if my if I smell my girlfriend's fart, I'm like get the fuck out of here. Yeah, this is not funny. Yeah, this is not funny. Anyone else's farts? This is not funny. But mine. Oh yeah, fucking Dude, delicious. My farts, yeah, I'm telling you, I I completely agree. My wife always catches me wafting my own up to my nose. Yeah, she's like, "Why are you doing that?" I was like, "To see if I'm gonna pass it over to you or not. Like, <laughs> I'm gonna push it. Like, I know how air works." Dude, what? you know how close we were to fucking girl farts nonstop when Hillary almost was elected. Dude? True, they'd have been farting. They'd have been unadulterated <laughs> girl if, farts. If we would have got Hillary in office, dude, girls would have been farting left and right. We wouldn't get anything done. But we could have finally been more misogynistic. You know what I mean? Like, True. Maybe that would have been the one that turned I mean, the leaf. Oh, over. I voted for Hillary, so you know what I mean. I voted for Hill Dog, and I was like, you know what? I'll let these farts happen once in a while. Mm. And then Big <laughs> T came in, dude, and he said, "Not today." Like, <laughs> I only voted for her so my girlfriend would shut the fuck up. <laughs> 
How do you guys find the energy to fucking do this? Like, smile, laugh, and all that shit after work. So, you guys have office jobs just like me. Yeah. You guys have to go on stage and be excited, happy, and all that shit. How do you find the energy to do it all the time? I think, luckily, a lot of the times, I'm around people I love, like, and like to hang out with. I shouldn't say love. That was gay. I don't know. I mean, you buy somebody a fucking shark tooth necklace. Yeah. That's, that's just, that's that's just, love. Damn, that's just deep. Oh, I love love. I love love yeah. so much. But no, I think yeah, it's but like. Then it's like, you think about it like, it's like love and then what? Yeah. I know. That rules, bro. Handsome <laughs> idiot. I don't know. Sorry, I cut you off. <laughs> hey, you Bert cast. I'm trying to name podcast too, guys. Give, I'm me, good give, at me, this. give me a little Bert. Oh, you think you're going to be with <laughs> I tried to I tried to tee you up with that hurt. earlier, and I was like, "Oh, Bert would." Bert, oh, 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 Bert, yeah. oh, that's what and that, then okay. you didn't catch it. I'm not good at comedy. Um, <laughs> comedy, yeah, sober. Uh, it sucks sober. No, but it's. Uh, I think a lot of it is just I genuinely get excited to see like just people I want to make laugh because in, in comedy it's like you're you're trying to make a lot of the comics laugh too, like mm-hmm. in the back of the room. So I don't know. I look at it as that. I look at it as also like. This is a thing I love doing that I like putting, like, work into to see the end result. Whereas, like, work is I always just do it because I need money. Mm. I've never been like, yes, I get to be a business development manager again today. But you're driven to a bunch of shitty bar shows and been like, I'm a fucking comedian yeah. in this three-person bar show in Central PA. Does your girl ask you before you go on stage, how much money are you going to make on the show? Like you're leaving. No, ha- she knew going in that there was no money in this. <laughs> I, was, I was just assuming because you have a daughter, right? Yeah. So she's like, oh, you're leaving me with the kid. And I did. Was, yeah. I, I did a sweetheart thing when like the world opened back up again. I was like, you know what I'm going to do? I was like, any money, I'm lucky enough. Like I have a good day job. Any money I make off of comedy, I was like, I'm putting in her piggy bank. And then I did a show for $75 and I was like, I don't love that <laughs> idea as much anymore. I love you. I don't love the idea anymore. Yeah. Daddy's going to spend this on some new pants or something. I don't know. Hello, <laughs> Beans. What yeah. about you there, Matt? Uh, <laughs> mine's a little <laughs> less wholesome. I, I spend the entire day at my job like, yo, this fucking sucks. And the only way maybe I don't have to do this anymore is if I do the thing at night. Like a lot of that, where like, especially the days where you don't feel like going out to like a show or a mic or like going and doing some stupid fucking shoot whatever i just the entire time i think about like how shitty it was at like 12 15 that i was sitting at my desk and i was tired and i was like half hard and <laughs> i just wanted to go home and i'm like if i can just make the thing at nighttime work and not have to do that we'll we'll stick with this it is like i i you get it too i know work you work from home a good amount so like I think both of us got a taste of how awesome it would be to have your whole day to yourself mm-hmm. and then go out at night and you're really only working for the time you're on stage and hanging out. But it's like that life feels so appealing. I love And I know I think you're in the same boat. I love just going to a random coffee shop half asleep and just sit there and be like, I'm writing jokes. I'm working on my craft right now. Looking at butts and yeah, stuff. Yeah, meanwhile, I'm putting off my actual job. And I'm like, why are bumblebees yellow and black? Oh, like, dude, when I'm, so when I'm at home, I work from I work in the office three days a week, two days at home. Mm-hmm. Those days I'm at home, I'm either editing for four or five hours of that. Yeah. <laughs> moving the mouse, that's it. Right. And then the other X amount of hours is finding new guests or researching the guests that are coming on yeah so i i work maybe an hour of that from home but i still get the same amount of work done that it's I incredible in the office. Yeah. yeah i can do so much work the four day I mean, so you fast. work a four day work week it makes so much sense yeah you can get everything you need done really in three days what, unless you're like a carpenter what do you you don't have to say where you guys work what kind of work do you guys do i'm in sales of course so it, yeah, it's, yeah i just sit there and i network and have to bullshit schmooze people but yeah. comedy is half of that is just all fucking network true that's too. why he could do that he's a good asset to the podcast is i cannot do that he's a good he's good at talking to the folks he's good at schmoozing and i have autism so yeah. I, what he means is i'm good at dming someone going yo do you want to come on in a couple of weeks we don't know when but true mm. <laughs> what about you i work in logistics i do too Really? Yeah. Quick. I'll bet you. Logisticize something now. Oh, do it. Compete. We can talk about it off the cast, but I bet you we have similar employers and employment. Well, if you're working from home that many times a week, I get to get a job with you because that sounds fucking amazing. So um, do you guys have like a pre-show ritual that you guys do before podcasts or stand up? Uh, no, I mean, stand up, like I've pinned it down to 
one time somebody told me they were like, just focus on your first joke. Just keep like doing that one over and over in your head. So that way, you know, your set's going to go like, so I, I just do a lot of that. Like I try not to talk to anyone the couple minutes before going on. Cause I'm like, I want to mm-hmm. save whatever energy I have right now to like for the beginning of this set and podcasting. It's literally just, we show up, we talk shit that we don't want to say into a microphone for an hour. And then we're like, we should probably hit record now. <laughs> Yeah, I just have, I just, before every set, I'm like, just remember this is dumb. Just remember you're at a bar and there's nine yeah. people here and this is kind of gay. You're doing this. So just go on there and be like, what's up, you dumb idiots? It Which, is tough, though, when you get to do fun shows, though, because then that's where, like, the nerves come in, where you're like, yeah. this is a great setting. I'm in a great club. I'm with comics I love, like, or I mm-hmm. want, like, them to love my stuff. Like, that's where the nerve, that's where I really go back to the, like, just focus on your first joke. Just think about that. You know, I, I just, I... That's it is it is fun like when you do get in like that big show thing and you're like all right this is the actual thing because mm-hmm. you do shows all the time but then they're not all like legitimate shows not to say they're not legitimate shows but they're not like these higher small shows. scale yeah when you finally get to those you're like oh shit dude I might not actually be good at this <laughs> <laughs> what about like a post show ritual if you have a good show do you guys do something to celebrate <laughs> we were just talking about this unfortunately. <laughs> You have a good show, and there's no more annoying person than a comic. Like, if a comic has a good set, they might be the most infuriating person on the planet. Because, like, you know, they come off stage, and you try to play it off, like, whatever, not a big deal. But they can't, you can't help but, like, wear that, like, you know what I just did up there. Yeah, yeah, you know what I just did, dude. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, there is, like, this air that you just can't get rid of. Because it does feel cool. Like, when you go on stage and you kill... Like, my roommate off and on does stand-up, and he talked about it, and he was like, I don't want to do it, but the times I've gone on and it's gone well, there probably aren't a lot of better feelings. It is, it is the great fe- greatest feeling, but then it's the worst when sometimes you're like, I don't think anyone's going to top that. And then the next comic murders even harder. You're like, all right, well, there goes that feeling. I, had, <laughs> I felt like the fucking king of the world for, I don't know, three and a half minutes. But even those, like, you're, we're such insecure losers that we're like, well, I set him up for that. <laughs> yeah. He wouldn't have done that well if I didn't. It was, kill it was because of me that he was so funny. Yes. Narc Mormon wouldn't have really done that well if <laughs> yeah, I, I kind of When you really think about it, I'm kind of a better comedian than Narc Mormon, dude. <laughs> what you got to do is when you're talking about, like, how good you did, you just got to close your eyes and tilt your head side to side. You know, really? <laughs> I've been doing that with my girl a lot lately where I'm just like, hmm. I just had a great podcast, you know, I did some good work, and did some good clips, got about 100,000 views. That's cool that you, when you do well, you talk like a black guy in a zoot suit. <laughs> Baby girl, I just went on there. If they said pudding couldn't be stopped up here, dude. <laughs> old, pudding, old pudding pockets. Old pudding pockets couldn't be stopped on that podcast. So let's get to the closing aspect where you're going to talk about your least favorite race. Go ahead, John. Uh, the Daytona 500. <laughs> no. I don't stand for that race. <laughs> good. It's it's just a problem in the racing community. It's pretty good. So Pocono, Pocono 500 all the way. <laughs> so let's get to the promotion aspect where there's a camera in front of your face. You can promote whatever you want to promote. You can say whatever you want to say. You want to go first? Sure. Uh, <laughs> post-game comedy show we're doing. It's a monthly comedy show at the Tap Room in Haddonfield, New Jersey. Uh, it's usually the first or second Thursday of every month. Uh, look out July 6th. It looks like we're doing it then. Uh, check out our podcast, That Rolls Podcast, uh, on YouTube. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, everywhere you can find them. Uh, but please go to the YouTube and subscribe. We're trying to bump that little twit up. Yeah, and, follow our Instagram, too. We got yep, yeah. our uh, the pods. Uh, Instagram is That Rolls Pod, right? Uh, I believe. Yeah, it sounds, sounds <laughs> we like, should know. Sounds the like links us. will be in the description if, they, if you don't know the exact spelling. But... Yeah, check that out. Uh, We will have a Patreon soon. We keep saying we're going to have it. We think at 100 episodes, we'll finally pull the trigger on that. Mm. Uh, Yeah, Monte Comedy for me. Uh, Hacks Comedy Goff I also have out there. I haven't put any new ones out in a while, but uh, a little goff and comedy show where it took comedians out in a goff course and was like, let's turn cameras on during the pandemic. So probably bringing that back in the next year maybe we've been we've been tossing around ideas i'm gonna keep we're doing that bitch bitch. yeah you guys say you're gonna take us out get drunk and play golf i'm always down to golf and if i can also get content out of it two birds one stone yeah, whatever it takes two whatever birds one cup us three go get blacked out on a fucking top golf and ruin john sobriety that's what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, dude. i mean i feel good about that about ruining someone's life yeah <laughs> that's yeah. what this is all about if we're gonna get views because it's more about us than his i mean his it's daughter about, are we need, having fun yeah you know his you daughter know. doesn't need a sober dad when he can be a content dad you well know what she mean? doesn't drink either what yeah kid wouldn't touch the stuff that's gonna be so uninteresting <laughs> i gotta start drinking again so my kid has something like to her she, she needs like some like bad part of her life to look look at like oh my god my dad drank you know what i mean on the way home i'll start like a four car pile up we'll make this thing happen dude. we'll get this kid interested <laughs> i'm gonna 
Thank uh, Matt Peoples and John Montag for coming out. Check out That Rules Podcast. All the links will be in the description. Robbie's not here, so he can't press the button. Robbie! Dude, sir, you get the bag. I'm gonna do the docking. That was a little bit off. It might not even be your